Hello and welcome to OKM Detectors. My name is Stefan and today I will show you scans which we have done with OKM 3D ground scanners. And I will help you to identify gold as well as treasures with our software Visualizer 3D Studio. Visualizer 3D Studio is a software which helps you to analyze the scans you have performed with all OKM 3D ground scanners. This software has been developed here internally in Altenburg in Germany now for over 25 years and we will continue doing so. However, now I will help you in understanding to do the in-depth analysis of your scan in finding the depth and finding the differentiation of your specific target. Now let's have a look into the examples. First of all, there are two main takeaways for this tutorial. First, you will learn how to differentiate between good and bad scans and to see error signals where you might actually need to perform a new scan. The second takeaway will be how you can really identify real targets such as gold or treasure for example. So now let's have a look at our first example. I've just launched the OKM Visualizer 3D Studio software here on this Windows machine. I will now open our first scan with the cursor in the open folder and select the first scan I want to analyze. After one or two seconds we have loaded the scan. Here you see the 2D view of the just performed scan. There are no real structures because every signal doesn't necessarily mean that there is a treasure. So that's why we don't see any specific structure or anomaly and that's why there's no specific target here. However, now let's go to the second example. We've just learned in the first example that we are always looking for structures and anomalies in those scans. Now the second example has those structures and anomalies. You see red and blue lines. However, this scan has been performed in a zigzag mode. And in this specific zigzag mode, the probe orientation of the user was wrong. That's why we have created filters. You go to modifiers and here you have a filter called rotational correction, which we now will apply. After having applied this filter, we do not see any significant anomalies or structures. So that's why I recommend to perform a new scan to make sure that you use the right probe orientation at the very beginning. I've just launched our third example. In this example, we do see some red and some blue areas. Nevertheless, we are currently not sure whether this might be a potential target. That's why we have created, for example, a filter, a modifier, which is called interpolation. You go through modifiers and then you click on interpolation. And this filter may help you in finding um, your target. We will now look at whether in this specific red area here we have several sense uh, signals and that's definitely the case. But we're still not sure, so let's go for another interpolation. Click here on modifiers and interpolate. After one or two seconds the software has created this interpolation. And now we see again several signals in this red area. So that might be a potential target and the interpolation filter might help you. Nevertheless, I always recommend going for a controlled scan to make sure that you can duplicate your information which you just performed and analyzed here in this scan. In the next example, we do see an anomaly here at the edge of the scan field on the left hand side. In those specific cases, if you see anomalies which are at the edge of any side of the scanned field, I always recommend to perform a new scan and to change your scan field. Why? Because at the moment we are not able to give more information about depth and the specific 
target right here. So in those examples, if you see those, please always change your scan field to put the potential anomaly into the middle of the scan field to perform a proper scan. In my fifth example, we do see a metallic signature right here. Why? Because we have two signals, one is in blue and one is in red, and those are the negative and the positive poles of a magnetic object. However, um, this has an impact on the entire scan field. So we are currently not sure whether there are more targets here in this area. So that's why we recommend using the OKM Pulse Novo, a pulse induction metal detector, to go over the scan field, take away this specific metallic object, and then perform a new scan to make sure that we can find all of our treasures and targets we are looking for. In comparison to my previous example, we will now have an example with a bigger metallic object. You can use the crosshair to see all the different signals of the positive pole here in the, of this magnetic object. But also you will find many signals of the negative pole of this magnetic object. Those magnetic objects are very important to us because a lot of treasure hunters have found as in this specific example, gold as well as silver coins in iron boxes. And this specific example is an iron box which has been found by one of our users who have sent us this scan results. So that's why we always say, even if it's a magnetic or metallic object, please have a look because there might also be precious metals inside. Now I found a very interesting example for you. This is a royal tomb which our devices have actually found. It's very interesting that green is not always the base layer of our scans. Here on the left hand side you see a lot of green, but on the right hand side you also see a lot of red. So in this specific case we cannot say that green is always an average or that a specific target is always red for example. because. We are always looking for structures which human beings have actually performed and done to the soil. And if you look very prominently, you see here an entrance and then here you see the royal tomb with a red uh, color and inside there's some green etc. That's why it's always important not to look at colors but to look at structures and anomalies to see something which is of interest to you. And the Royal Tomb example is the best way to understand this fact. This example has been sent to us from a customer. First of all, I will set the length and the width of the scan field here in the characteristics. After typing in the width and the length, we will choose the soil type here on the right hand side. The soil type is very important for the depth measurement, which we're looking at in a second. But first of all, uh, we have different OKM standard soil types here, as well as more soil types, but the customer told us that the scan has been performed in clay. After selecting the soil type, we go to scan information. And here in the bottom right information, you see the depth. So I will use the crosshair and go to the signature which we see in the scan. And here we see a depth of roughly one meter. So that's the short analysis for this specific scan. My last example is a very interesting example because we do see a lot of red. Nevertheless, in this area we do see some strong green and blue areas. And if we're looking with the crosshair, there are many signals which are dark blue. And our customer told us this was a gold pot uh, with jewelry inside. And it's a very good example because even if you have a lot of red or a lot of blue or a lot of green, we're not looking for colors, we're looking for real structures, for anomalies. And if you see such a result, then this is a potential target. Don't look too much into the colors, look more into structures and anomalies. 
I've now shown you nine different examples and how to analyze with our Visualizer 3D Studio software. If you're interested in more information, please go to our YouTube channel, our website or read the user manuals for every single 3D ground scanner. We also offer scan analysis with our team here, so if you're interested in that, please reach out to us here in Germany, in Altenburg or to one of our global distribution partners. We're looking forward to hearing from you.